Hello. So, hello everyone. How is the audio? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Just comment somewhere so that I can also see. If you can hear me, you can see me properly. Just comment somewhere and you can start with your question. This video is specifically about studying and living in Netherlands. Any questions related to studying and living in Netherlands? I am still waiting for feedback so that I am sure that you can hear and see me. If you can hear and see me then please comment. That you can hear and see. Is my audio okay? My video okay? I'm just waiting for a few people to join and once I get a feedback from you then I will start. And if you have any questions you can just comment in the comments. Namaste Umesh. Hi Saurabh. Hi Silpa. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, anything about studying and living in Netherlands. This video is only about studying and living in Netherlands. like a real estate broker. Saurabh is saying he cannot hear me. Can you really not hear me? Oh, I just switched it off so that you can hear me. In Netherlands, I hope that the, now the internet is maybe better. So I was saying uh, Shilpa about the housing is that you can check on you can check on pararias.nl, funda.nl or you can go to Easy Makilas. Easy Makilar is like a third party like a rental broker who can help you to uh, find houses uh, and they charge like a one time fee. 
uh, but they are really helpful in finding houses so you can go to easymarketlash.com which is like a rental broker so i hope now the video is better i try to fix something and uh, let me see what Saurav is asking i am a bsc agriculture student from india i like to do my msc in agriculture and plant science from netherlands from wakeningen university yeah so wakeningen university is very good but you don't have a concept of placement in netherlands so you need to find job yourself you'll have a career fair where you can get accustomed to many different companies many different options that you have uh, but yeah so uh, i would say like go for working in university in agriculture it's ranked in one or two in the world and you can go to linkedin to find some alumni if you want to talk with them like how is working in an university is it good or not and what are the different options that you have so you can always have a look with them i don't know how is the video now i hope the video is better now okay so i get more questions suraj is asking how is your postdoc going so i just started my postdoc in first week of june as you know so it's very slowly like we are getting to know each other and also define my research goal like what will be my track because it's a two-year contract so we will need to explain and define like what i need to do to proceed with my postdoc Uh, Saurav is asking is agriculture sector jobs good in Netherlands yeah as I said like agriculture it is ranked very high so it's really good in agriculture uh, I would like to do MSc in breeding um, I, I, I don't have specific idea about different fields like horticulture or uh, breeding or food there are different sub varieties in that so you can ask some alumni on LinkedIn, but in general, agriculture it's very famous. Wageningen University. Okay, so Anirudh is asking. I'm doing BSc honors. Can I do MSc in CS in Netherlands? Uh, what are the scholarship opportunities? So Anirudh, go and check the study in Holland dot nl website. It will give you a very good idea about uh, what are the different scholarships it's an official website and it's like an aggregator for all the universities in netherlands what are the opportunities what are the scholarships by the way who are joining late maybe you will see the video and audio now well if you want to book a personal appointment and talk with me one to one then do check the calendar link on the top of the screen you can book an appointment whenever i'm free for a few months it will be available then i'll try to switch to indian service but yeah just have a look if you want to talk with me one to one and please like the video so that it boosts the video to many people and you can also share with each other to help each other out so Nivedia is asking yeah so Anirudh I will show you just wait before I go to Nivedia uh, I will show you the study in Holland website so it looks something like this you can type study in Holland dot nl and then you will see the different options that you have financing your study scholarship opportunities you will find everything all detail information in study in holland.nl it's a very good website to find information about that thank you suraj so nivedia uh, how are you okay i'm good and nivedia is asking i'm a student from iser pune doing ms in geology how are the scope of geology phd in Netherlands opportunities so i don't have much idea about geology but i've heard like people who are who were doing civil engineering in tu delft uh, from them i have heard that there is uh, am i confusing with something
just wait i think there was one video i made with geology with someone if i am not wrong yeah earth science i think i made someone with geology so yeah so you can ask people who were who are in civil faculty they will know about geology um at least for civil i know it is ranked really good like in top 5 in the world so maybe geology also there are a lot of opportunities but i have frankly no idea go to linkedin and please check with them but anyone from civil might be able to answer you so saurav is asking could you please explain about the seasonal visa in netherlands for agriculture it would help me seasonal visa i there is nothing called seasonal visa so either you come with a study permit or we you come with a work permit whatever you want to call it visa or whatever so i don't know what seasonal visa you mean maybe you can elaborate but i don't understand i have never heard of something like a seasonal visa in netherlands for agriculture Uh, maybe i am missing something and nivedia you can also have a look in academic transfer because you are asking about geology phd so in general academic transfer is a very good website i have mentioned it repeatedly for uh, searching about phd in the netherlands so go to academic transfer i can open and show you here i don't know if my internet will be slow because in the beginning we had some problem with the internet by the way who don't want to chat here and want to uh, do a one on one appointment face to face uh, talk with me directly you can book a appointment in the calendly link on the top of the page so but still i'll just try to open academic transfer and show you and hope that my internet doesn't get slow down so design extreme is asking will the 30% ruling be stopped yeah there was some news that the 30% ruling might be stopped uh, it hasn't been enforced yet but it might be stopped very soon so nivedia okay you are doing msc okay i understand so yeah 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 you can pursue a phd in geology as i mentioned you can talk with alumina but i will just show you this website this is academic transfer where you can uh, type keywords job type phd postdoc whatever you want to see and everything you can find here all the phd advertisements in any university in the netherlands you will definitely be posted here so keep an eye on this you can also create a email alert to keep on applying i would suggest in the last year of your masters or last 6 months try to start applying because you don't know how much time it might take so it's always a good idea to apply as early as possible okay tani so design extreme i i would acknowledge that yeah i agree that 30% rolling is going to stop but it hasn't been finalized recently they reduced last 2 years they reduced from 8 to 5 years for the 30% rolling and now there is a talk in the parliament here that they are going to stop it soon suraj is saying i am an incoming phd student at institute polytechnic de paris ecole polytechnic france okay actually when you said ecole polytechnic i was thinking about epfl in switzerland but anyways uh, they have some french connection but anyway um, that's a good news that you got admitted for phd in paris france hope you have a smooth transition here and good luck for that sort of sorry suraj Tani Chaudhary is asking how competitive is PhD in psychology does somebody with masters from india have a good chance what should i keep in mind while applying for these positions uh so phd in psychology i mean any phd they it can be competitive it can be less competitive it really depends on which university apply which position you apply whether it's a full university project whether it's a because it's like a job so it can be like a half university half industry project so it really depends on what kind of phd is it it's difficult to say like that uh but does somebody with masters from india yeah definitely there are many people you can check my video i have a video on my channel you can type on youtube phd in netherlands directly from india or phd in netherlands directly from india space sambit phd then you will find that video and i made a interview with someone like how he applied directly after masters in india so you can definitely apply it is possible uh if you have a good profile uh good connection like you are a fit for that position then why not 
uh, you can go to my PhD in Netherlands playlist. I have mentioned very nicely like the motivation letter, uh, cover letter or the uh, all the things that you need to keep in mind when you apply for a PhD in Netherlands. You can find very nice videos there. Postdoc fellowship in Netherlands. So you can call it fellowship but again after PhD postdoc is also a job here. So Rohit, Rohit is asking. So Rohit please go to academic transfer which I showed few minutes before. Academic transfer is the website where you can find all research positions whenever they are open and you can also search for postdoc positions in the Netherlands on academic transfer. Uh, Nivedia is asking, actually I'm doing MSc, yeah, I already answered Nivedia. Saurav is saying, can you suggest famous job portal in Netherlands other than LinkedIn and Indeed? So there is something called Stepstone. If you go to my working in Netherlands video, which is the most viewed video on my channel, just type on YouTube working in Netherlands space Sambit PhD. You can find that video and in that video, I in the description of that video, please read that. I have mentioned many websites, whatever I comes to my mind now, stepstone.nl, there is another website apart from Indeed and LinkedIn, which is good. And sometimes in LinkedIn, you can also find some genuine, genuine consultants uh, who can kind of help you to, uh, like a third party, they, are, they act like a third party in between you and the company, but it's difficult to find genuine consultants when you are abroad. So maybe ask someone who is kind of, if you know someone, some alumni, because I know people here also after graduating are contacted by these consultants and they take their help to initially find jobs if it takes a long time for them and you can always trust them, but it's difficult to identify who is genuine, who is fake. Uh, okay, Suraj was thinking of doing a mandatory internship or semester exchange at Redbound University, TU Delft or TU Delft next summer. Any suggestions regarding approaching the lab or other university? So Suraj, I would say if your university allows to do something like that, then it should not be a problem. Only thing will be to talk with the Normally here the international office handles these things. Uh, so it would be a good idea to connect with like if your university allows it then connect with the international office and some professor here with whom you can work and they will definitely direct you to the right place where you can and try to plan this long before because if you move here for even for six months housing will be a big problem and apart from that all the legal formalities and everything visa and everything so yeah so try to plan it accordingly Just trying to scroll up to see if I missed any questions. I don't think so, but still. I hope that now the video is better after fixing all the things. And by the way, who joined now, you can like the video so that it boosts. That's how the algorithm works. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one appointment, talk with me person to person, you can always book it via Calendly on the top of the page. So can we do PhD on orientation year visa? Before that, Vishwanath is asking what is the acceptance rate of Delft for MS in CSE? So if I remember correctly, five years back, it was around 70%. So I have told this repeatedly, don't go by the numbers. I would say apply as early as possible. Any faculty, be it computer science, any faculty, Vishwanath, uh, it's always like if you have uh, they have a rolling admit in TU Delft. Most every university in the Netherlands has that. So they don't compare you to pool of applicants. They don't wait for all the applications. Once you apply, immediately they start processing. They compare it to their benchmark or the cutoff they have and some standardization. If you cross that, you are admitted. So my experience would say that it is much easier to get in here to top universities in the world, in the which is in the Netherlands as compared to other countries. But surviving later like doing assignments and completing your masters in time and also dealing with the pressure and everything bit is bit more but getting in is not that difficult uh, let me go back to shilpa okay can we do phd on orientation or visa i don't think 
uh, as far as I know, you can do a job on orientation year visa, but if you get a PhD, uh, I don't know how the process works. Like in job, you are allowed to do that, but when you get a PhD, as far as I know, they apply for your uh, permit, like for the scientific researcher, you can call it HSM, it is not HSM, but like scientific researcher and the university normally applies it for you. So you don't need to pay anything for that. So normally it's if the university says you that they will apply for it after your orientation, your visa ends, then that is the process. So you don't need to worry about that. The university HR will definitely tell you what is the process, what it needs to be done and they will do everything on from their side. What are the chances of getting a PhD position in chemistry without any publication research expense? Rohit Reddy. So yeah, Rohit, uh, as I said, as I have said many times before, uh, you don't need specifically publication, but when you have more applicants, then it might be a deciding factor if there are similar applicants with your profile with good gpa and good research experience even though you don't have publication so it's always added benefit but if you see the advertisement on academic transfer they don't specify most positions won't ask for mandatory publication when you apply for a phd so if you are thinking that that might stop you don't think like that try keep on applying apply for as much as possible as many positions and you have a chance So, what's the name? Ilya. Ilya Chai. Is it possible to be employed by the university without applying to an ad? Can a professor help me with that? Yeah, so the thing is like, it's not that you definitely need to apply by a position, but they need to have funding. So, because here, uh, it's like a job. So, they give you a contract. Only when they have a funding, they will do that. And if before something is advertised, if you contact the professor and maybe if he doesn't have some funding now if you send some cold emails and maybe after four months he has a position and he thinks that you are a very good candidate for that position then maybe he might contact you uh, but i would say don't only expect that i would say try to do both like maybe keep on applying and also try to side by side send email to professor to maximize your chances but whenever you are hired the professor will definitely if he doesn't have funding, he won't hire you. So he will definitely hire you with the work contract and getting all the benefits, salary and everything. Is proficiency test necessary? Aditi is asking for masters. As far as I know, you can check the university website rules change every year. It is mandatory, but for PhD, sometimes it is waived off depending on where you did your masters. And sometimes when coming directly from India also Aditi, sometimes they wave off the uh, TOEFL or something if the professor agrees with that. So it's really case to case basis, but it's not mandatory in everywhere. Let me see the next question. So Saurav is saying is doing internship after BSc worth in Netherlands. Ravi is saying, hello, sir, I've done MTech from NIT. Hi, Ravi. Um, if you are looking for applying for PhD, then go to academic transfer, which I showed in the beginning of the video. So Saurav is saying is doing internship after BSc worth in Netherlands. I don't know what are your expectations because it really depends on your expectation. But definitely I will try to interview. I have in mind from last year only I know few people with whom I wanted to interview about MSc in agriculture uh, from Wageningen University which is the best university in the world. Uh, and I will definitely interview them and maybe also provide their contact on the description of the video. So that I can do. Samesh is saying, is it a good idea to pursue PhD in Tudel if I want to get into industry for an R&D job? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like if you see the semiconductor, whatever my knowledge is, I'm not from semiconductor, but I know people from uh, embedded systems and all they go to. So ASML is like the major leading chip, uh, not chip, but major in this field. 
so asml hires from tu delft or tu eindhoven and uh, definitely you can get into very good companies here with a very nice salary and benefits nitesh kumar is saying i am in first year phd environmental science in czech university of life sciences prague by the way now i'm thinking to switch my phd to netherlands so how is it possible what is your suggestion so as far as i know nitesh you can send a email to a professor but i know that they won't allow they don't have such kind of program that if you have done one year in czech that you can switch here and continue for two more years and finish your phd but maybe if your professor agrees you can finish in less than four years which is the desired term they won't officially switch you but maybe because you have experience and if you publish very fast in a short time then you can finish your phd faster but they cannot like on paper switch you from check to here as far as i know but it's not a bad idea to email professor because you don't know sometimes i might be also wrong and you may be surprised if you send a email to professor and who knows you will find a even newer better way to finish your phd faster even if you don't officially shift it transfer it good luck nitesh how to apply for phd or ms so for phd as i said check academic transfer everything is mentioned there all the requirement details for masters you have to go to university website and you can also check which i showed in the beginning of the video study in holland.nl where you can find all the information about scholarship and everything about masters Tani Chaudhary is asking, is it okay to apply for multiple? Yeah, yeah, definitely it is okay. So as a candidate or as a employee who is applying for a job, you should maximize. Think about your chances. It's not bad to. Everyone knows that you are looking for the best for you, and if you think it is the best, then apply. It doesn't matter even if the professors talk with each other; they will know that you are ambitious. It's I I have never seen any personal feeling or anything here about this. even i applied when i was applying for post doc and also for phd anuj joshi is saying i have seen your videos on tax if we have only one partner working in a family how to calculate take tax benefits so i would say uh, i mean different criteria apply when you have a partner the videos that i showed you was mostly in uh, considering my case which is the single person case a single individual without any partner so when you have partner sometimes you get some allowances sometimes you get some rebates there are different rules so one thing will be if you don't want to spend money you can contact belasting deans which is actually the tax authorities here uh, you can call them uh, which is the easiest they will they have english line or you can contact them i don't think they accept messages on twitter just like ind you can always contact them on uh, instagram or um, facebook and calling is the best fastest option uh, so they can help you with queries if you have specific queries when you fill the form online and if you really want not to waste that much time and explore then maybe spend some money hire a tax consultant uh, they will charge anywhere between 50 to 100 euros depending on what how elaborate is your declaration and uh, so my video is mostly to give you a, like a preliminary information and i don't have also time to go through i mean i could have done that but i don't have time to go through and charge money or something like that so yeah go through official tax consultants you can find from your company or somewhere who really give nice advice charge 50 to 100 euros or if you have time do it free call again and again belasting deans ask specific sections that you don't understand while filling and uh, they can definitely assist you for free over a phone call so aditi is saying phd is employed but what can be other cost to bear as an individual uh, go check my expenses video aditi you will know like very normal like you spend for your house food expense whatever you spend like when you anywhere in the world if you work you will spend for your home food and shelter right like home food and clothing sorry that's the basic requirements that I, and apart from that you can have many other so 
to be serious you can check my video on expenses and savings in netherlands if you type expenses in netherlands space samit phd on youtube you will find that video or you can go to savings in netherlands space samit phd you will find that video and that will give you an idea about what are the expenses you can expect in houses and everything and remember that that was made like a year back so maybe keeping in mind the inflation it has increased a lot after the war in ukraine try to add some amounts now uh santanu is saying sort of thank you you are most welcome sort of santanu is saying i'll be moving to netherlands very soon what are the good places to stay when office is in utrecht utrecht is also very expensive i would say i mean almost similar to amsterdam but less than that uh, also is the holiday pay taxable in netherlands any components in salary which are exempt in income tax so santanu you can check my benefits and allowances in netherlands playlist if you don't find it type on youtube benefits in netherlands or allowances in netherlands space sambit phd i think i made a short video where i explained how you can save some taxes legally like if you buy a bike and something like that but your holiday pay bonus and everything won't be non taxable they are definitely taxable but if you buy a bike and these kind of secondary things then you can save make some amount of the holiday pay non taxable i have made a video on that uh, apart from that you need to pay tax and holiday pay is it's very tragic but you have to pay almost 50% tax in your holiday pay so yeah that is one way you can save something legally uh elia is asking is it worth enrolling as an external candidate just hope for funding or is it better to apply to advertise position okay so that is what you wanted to ask so it depends like uh what is your status like for example if i was in your place like as a non european i don't know what is your status as a non european i want advice to go that path but if you are from here or from any european country then maybe you can choose that path because you don't have the pressure of the expenses so if you or maybe if you are doing a job and want to do a as a external phd you arrange your funding and uh, want to continue the phd for a longer time not finish in 4 years then you can go for that path but i think it will be whatever i've seen i had some colleagues like that it's difficult to focus on the phd if you want to do like that but it varies from individual to individual if you are okay with that if you have a family i don't know your personal situation it is definitely possible and for that obviously you need to email professors and uh, they also need to agree to be in this kind of path and also supervise you certain number of hours every week because they get paid from based on that also from the somewhere like somewhere they will arrange something uh, hari prasad is asking how do you rate netherlands and germany in terms of living and research so it's too early to comment about germany but one thing i can say in this 2 3 months which i already knew about that i already expected about that that getting the residence permit arranging an appointment speaking in english is a big challenge in germany and i already knew that but i am seeing even worse situations there many places you pay in cash there are many downsides there are i i don't maybe i am not seeing the upsides because i had a biased opinion about germany but maybe soon i will make a comparison video based on my experience but i think here things these type of things for international experts were much smoother when you register in the city hall for your address and you go for a residence permit it was very smooth and there was always a english line they were very fluent very proactive very fast but here these things are very slow and you have again the language barrier so Uh, for research i don't know for research i am finding it very similar and i have heard that they have many because germany is very big so they have many national bodies who also fund research even though you write a proposal in english so getting a funding when you are growing in the research ladder is higher you have a higher chance in germany uh, as compared to netherlands unless you rely on erasmus or european grants on a higher international level or european level but i'm not sure about this so once i'm sure about this maybe after a year of staying there i can make a comparison video 
ILTS is mandatory for MS in Netherlands. I think ILTS or TOEFL, Sarath is asking, is mandatory for uh, any masters. But please don't go by my word. Check individual university website. You'll get a clear idea. Uh, so Shilpa, okay, Samesh is saying, what are your thoughts on living in Netherlands considering effects of recession in Europe? Uh, I am planning to pursue PhD in the Netherlands. Yeah, so if you are a single person, still recession won't going to is not going to affect you. If you have check, if you check my savings and expenses video, then you will get an idea that okay, if I was saving thousand euro a month, maybe now I'll save eight hundred euros a month or nine hundred euros. It won't you won't see that much significant difference, but. If there are more people, more dependents who don't earn, then it might get complicated because everyone, for everyone, the housing and housing is still shared, but for everyone, you get the energy bills and food and everything gets multiplied. So that you need to, but for a single person, I won't notice that significant difference because you are getting paid really nice. If you check Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland are one of the, like Sweden, they are one of the top paid PhD places all over the world. Quote me on that. Silpa is saying I'm double masters in microbiology. Oh wow, congratulations. Uh, with one master of research by thesis from Newcastle, UK in 2019, I got orientation year visa working at the mo at the moment i don't know what are my chance of phd now after three years it, it doesn't matter like you are thinking from the indian perspective maybe because many people ask me this question like if i have a gap then what is going to happen so when you write your cover letter motivation letter if you think that will give a positive light then try to stress like how you what were you doing and how does it help you to transition from that gap to here but if you think that sheds a negative light then don't focus on that but i don't see a problem if you have a gap of three years in your cv when you're applying for phd uh, and also you have a research by thesis from another university you can also mention that like i don't know like sometimes people might think why you did double masters maybe you can also make that a very interesting story like i'm just giving a fictional example because i don't know your personal case so maybe you can say like okay i studied microbiology in one field and then i was more interested to go deeper into that and then did a thesis on that and this is how it expanded my horizon it's just a random fictional example And if you need help with the SOP or motivation letter, you can always book an one-on-one -on -one appointment, talk with me. I can give you personal feedback on the calendar link on the top of the page. So I'll try to wrap this video, try to answer the last few questions and wrap the video in maybe five minutes, two minutes, because it's already 45 minutes. Um, can learning Dutch language, Saurav is asking, help to get a job, how fluent? Some jobs need Dutch language, I won't deny that, but most IT or software related jobs don't need that really depends on what kind of jobs you're looking for so it obviously is going to help you but even if you have certain level I don't think you can speak fluently because to speak fluently I think you need minimum B2 and normally people who apply have like A2 or hardly B1 because for the language exams that we used to give here it was A2 I don't know what's the level now so yeah So, okay, Aditi, Indian master's degree equivalent to Netherlands to Germany is not always mentioned, so how to know it? So, as far as I know, uh, people who apply after master's directly PhD here, if you see the videos, uh, all P master's, two years master's degree in India is recognized here. So, I don't know if they have, it is never mentioned anywhere like a specific just like you have in us to grade conversion or something so i don't think you should worry much about that and if you have really strong uh, fear about that then you can always email the admission committee or the professor or maybe the admission department there uh, i think mostly it's the professor like there's a contact person you can ask them if you have specific question on your transcript grades or the master's degree that you did in india but i don't think it should be a problem uh 
Aditya is asking, Aditya, I would suggest you, I will make a video how to write an email, you can, um, I will make a video on that soon, uh, but in general, I would say try to write a very short email and try to put everything instead of attachments in a website or somewhere digitally, like a, uh, where they can download or have a look, uh, what, what is your CV or something, because mostly the, there's a higher chance they won't read the email because they are so busy and even if they read the email they won't be they won't be encouraged to download like five six attachments so it's a good idea to combine them and put somewhere or maybe if you cannot put it digitally maybe combine everything like in one pdf you have like your cv and maybe one page motivation why you want to work with that professor what is your interest how your interest matches with his interest very short uh, very clear, precise, very short because crispness, preciseness to the point, these things are really uh, valued a lot here if, if you contact any professor. Is there anything unique format for Netherlands in making job CV or resume? No, there's no unique format. You can check my CV. You can type in YouTube CV space Sambit PhD. I have made a short video where I have, because I also use that CV when I was applying for jobs and also PhD parallelly because I was not sure if I'll be accepted as a PhD, how fast. So check that and there is a sample CV on my website also. You can have a look on that. Yeah, Aditi, it's uh, if uh, normally the grade requirements are not mentioned because there is not like that specific requirement. Sometimes if you have a good profile, I'm talking about PhD, you can get accepted also with, I don't know, like uh, you can also get accepted with 7.5 in masters or eight. I mean, it is on the higher end, but also 7.5. So it's talking about Netherlands PhD. So it really varies. That's why they don't mention a specific cutoff for PhD. Uh, some is you cannot quantify because every position varies so it really depends how many people are applying what kind of position as I mentioned in the beginning of the video so you cannot quantify. Uh, Sayan is saying in Switzerland there are five types of rate of salary in that five rate of salary is highest is there same system in Netherlands no in Germany I think they have something like that uh, when I started getting my first month salary you have some scales like that depending on whether you are married when your partner is working married not working something like that uh, you do you have a different tax class but uh, there is nothing like that and in Netherlands this gets settled in the tax returns when you fill but in the salary as far as I know I have not heard about it maybe because I only see the single person salary or talked with the but I have talked with other people also I've never heard but during filling the tax return they had something like that they get some allowances if they have a partner or something so Latta Raja, there, this is my friend's daughter who is in Rotterdam, she needs accommodation urgently, she is in Dubai now, any local contact. So as I mentioned I think in the beginning of the video someone was asking, I, I don't have local contact but it will be a good idea to check Easy Makilars, you can type easymakilars.com. I showed that in the beginning of the video but I can show again. So Easy Makilas is like a rental broker website where you can find lot of options. They will charge you a one time fee and they are verified if you go via the website and these brokers even though they charge one time fee they can help you when there is a housing crunch. They will charge maybe 100, 200 or 300 euros one time fee and they can help you to find a house as soon as fast as possible. So maybe I can show you easy makilas. It looks something like this. So you can contact makilar means like a rental broker. Um, okay. So now I'll wrap up. It's already very big. 
uh, final question from Jagpreet Singh. By the way, who joined now, you can book a personal one-on-one -on -one appointment if you want to talk with me using the Calendly link. And do like the video so that it helps to boost to the algorithm. Share with your friend. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, let me check Jagpreet. Can I apply without IELTS? I have motivation letter. My all subject in English. Uh, so Jagpreet, um, mostly for masters, you need IELTS or TOEFL. Uh, but do check the university website. If they say you don't need, then you don't need. So I cannot say exactly. But as far as I know, you will need IELTS or TOEFL, like an English test requirement. Final question. Vishank Rajput is saying, how much money we have to spend to reach Netherlands for bachelors? um i think they similar like masters they will ask you first year's fee and considering the rate now i think it can vary between fifteen thousand. if you include the living expense which they take to a blocked account in the first year then i would say around twenty five thousand euro but do check the university website don't quote me on that but i think on the max side it will be around 24 25 000 euro they might ask you to deposit uh somewhere between 20 to 25,000 euro. Yeah, so take care, be happy, and I'll see you soon.